So, NASCAR. As a car guy growing up in New York City, I can't say I was ever that into it, but it wasn't really a lack of interest, it was a lack of access. Yeah, I had a cousin who was more of an uncle who took me to qualifying at Pocono, but then shortly thereafter, I got bit by the light, fast, and nimble car bug, and that probably explains why in the past six years of the show, we've looked at Le Mans cars and rally cars, and hell, we've even competed in rally. But friends, I feel it's high time you and I change that. What better way to do that than to go to the mecca of the NASCAR World, Charlotte, North Carolina, and meet with the grandest of grand poobahs in that world, Hendrick Motorsports. Thinking we would go look at some old race cars, talk about some nice moonshiners, call it a day. Well, let's just say that Rick and his crew, they had a different plan. Okay, this may look like something your father taught you way before you got your license, but instead, friends, this is the most important principle of NASCAR. So once I got done gloating about our team's epic win, Andy translated our experience to the key principle of success in NASCAR. We're not a peak performance sport. Uh, you know, it's not like well, you can have a really good run in football and you can run so overwhelmingly dominantly that you can put enough points on the board that you win simply because your run is so good. A real simple example, if we've got a great pit crew uh, at, at the race, drivers driving a great race, crew chief is calling really good strategy, uh, but if we have a problem with the engine, like our day is over, we can't rely on the strength of the pit crew or the talent of the driver or the strategy calls of the crew chief. Our weakest link determines our performance. So in motorsports, we're constantly about shoring up weakness. That's theory. So let's take another look at this. We were three people to change one tire in 19.7 seconds. Now, the pros. Car comes in, right side goes up, gas tank goes in. Change the front tire, change the rear tire. Spent tires go back up over the wall. They come around to the left side, front tire gets changed, rear tire gets changed. Tires back over the wall, car comes down, 12 seconds. People, 12 seconds. Now as proud as I am to say that I am a distance runner, those guys all former ball and stick professional athletes. And with that, welcome to NASCAR Today. So after a rather profound first day in NASCAR country, I wanted to find a place to reflect upon the day's lessons. What better way to do that than taking some nightlife? Southern style. Show, Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, ain't you that Moto Man guy I seen from the internet? Yeah, yeah. Ain't you that Ford guy? Yeah, man. We just got done playing. I gotta tell you, man. I have never heard anything like that in my life, and it was incredible. Man, thanks for saying that. So. What are you doing down here? Just came down to see us? You know, I've, I've never been to a NASCAR race. I'm going to Martinsville this Sunday. Wait, all you do, everything I've seen with you is cars. You right. ain't never been to a NASCAR race. Just, you know, it's one of those things I've just never gotten around to. Have you ever even been down here in the South? Well, I did make a mistake with a girl in Georgia once. I understand that, my friend. Listen, there is a whole lot more to do in the South besides NASCAR. So I'll admit, I was intrigued. So I let Mr. Ford drive my Chevy, and he took me to a place and a Chevy, both I had never seen. Late model Impala. It's the funniest looking Impala I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, they ain't got these in LA. And this right here is what they do down here in the South. Dirt track racing, Friday, Saturday night. This is where it's all at. But listen, here's what I want to do. I want to put you, fancy jacket, out there in that dirt. Oh, absolutely. I'm a world rally driver, dude. Yeah. I won a trophy. A trophy? Yes. They don't give no, well, you might win a trophy around here, but it's really more about impressing the country girls. Oh, okay, that, that's better than the trophy I got. Uh, it is, well, don't say that till you see some of them. 
I know, want one to dress up like then the whole Scarlett O'Hara thing, you know, with the hoop dress. How about that? I don't know. I mean, if you can talk her into it, sometimes that costs extra. I don't know. I've heard about <laughs> it. I've never really actually been a part of it. Here's the deal. I'm going to go around this track a couple times, show you what's going on, Mr. Rally Driver. Okay. That ain't quite like a dirt track in the south, but I, I, I get you. And then I'm going to set a time, and then I'm going to let you get in there and let you set a time and see if you can compete with... Oh, I'm going to mop the floor with your ass. <laughs> Is that right? Absolutely. I hope you got a big mop. This is a we whole lot We need to put something on this. Let's do put, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we do. Tell me. I'll let you, if you beat me, I'll let you come to one of my shows and open up. All your fancy, dirty jokes, I'll let you open up. If I win, I get to take your pretty new SS around the dirt track. Uh, what do you think about that? It's like asking for my girl to take her to bed. I just, uh, and she's not even my girl. Is she your cousin? Because that's all right down here. Friends, this is the part of our story where I couldn't help but feeling I was about to get a hoodwinked. And you know the old saying, a smart man knows his strengths, but a smarter man knows his weaknesses. So I felt it high time that I learned the rules, really understand how things work down here. These are the scales? Yes, we use scales right here. And wh wh what's, the, what's the weight, the ideal weight you're looking for for these things? Uh, 3,300 plus plus however the much the difference of the driver's weight is. Oh, so they actually weigh the driver separately from the car? Yes. Wow. Now, drivers that are way over 180, anything over 180, that's a cutoff point. <clears throat> have to weigh 3,300 pounds. And it goes down in 10 pound increments after that, all the way down to 130, I think. Let's say Danica Patrick, who's fairly light. Yeah, she's on the 130 side. Probably She's less than that, but her car still has to meet the, the three, uh, 30, 340 oh, pound minimum I see. I see. Okay. for weight. And are there, are there any other instruments you're using for the, uh, for the weight in besides just the wheels? Uh, well, actually, we take all the measurements for the car, uh, the camber, wheelbase, tread width, uh, housing location, things like that on top of the platform here. And then after we do all those measurements, we'll roll forward onto the scales and we'll scale the car from here. This actually folds up uh, to no wider than the actual scales itself. It has wheels on the bottom of it, so we can take it and roll it in the back of the truck. And then what's this here? Is this just a, the ramp to get it up? We actually check the, uh, the frame heights of the car back here. They have to meet a minimum of six in the front and eight in the rear for the, for the actual chassis itself. And the body requirement are measured off of the front splitter and they have a quarter inch window that they have to be in in the green. Wow. And post race they get yellow. And I thought scrutineering in the rally world was bad, but on the flip side I felt a whole lot more confident that things would be on the up and up on my somewhat nerve-wracking bet with Mr. Ford. So it was back to East Lincoln Speedway to check in on his progress with that very odd looking Impala. And at first, things seemed to be going swimmingly, until they weren't. And all of a sudden, well, let's just say, friends, I didn't feel as confident. It's a country thing. It's a country thing. It's a country thing. It was about that point that I became somewhat sick to my stomach. Colt displaying the famous Southern hospitality suggested we go get something to eat. Now, you are never going to see me say no to down-home Southern cooking. But friends, this is the part of our story where we turned up at a sushi joint. So, look, I'm not having the L.A. Moto Man come in here and making just regular old sushi. We're going to do it kind of Southern style. We got some pulled pork here. We got some caramelized onions. We throw it on the grill. This is how we do it in the south, boys. Barbecue onions. There, there, there we go. Get a little sauce on there. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I might find me a job here if this singing thing don't work out. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Hey, hey, hey. I should have popped there. Now I did my thing back here in the back. Southern boy on the grill. Now it's time to see if you can get your roll on, Moto Man. So Asian fusion, right? Well, uh, wrong. Burgushi. You see, my job here today at Cowfish is to take burger items and put them in sushi format and serve it as a sushi roll. As you can imagine, I was a bit confused because I was handed pulled pork and told to put it into a roll. Um, 
I didn't know how much pulled pork to put in, I didn't know how to do the roll, and then after some trial and error, I was introduced to the bamboo mat, and then I figured I had mastered it, so I started to notice some of the cool artwork on the wall. It really picked up on this Bergushi theme. Very, like, almost hipster-esque, but even cooler than that because a local artist created all of it. But then, my supervisor, Rafali, came over. He's like, well, you're not quite done yet. You need to take the long string potato in very cold water and wrap it around the pork roll. This proved to be a bit more daunting of a task than the roll itself, but after a couple of hiccups, I was able to get there and take my finished product and hand it over to Grillmeister Ford himself. This looks pretty good. You look like you wrap spaghetti around the omelet. This is what I know how to do. We can put some catfish in there, fried chicken. We fry it all down here. Twinkies, Oreos. I've even seen deep fried butter in a pan. So while Colt is reminiscing about frying things, why don't you and I take a look at some of the official NASCAR vehicles that you don't see when they broadcast NASCAR. What do you got back here? Is this a jump seats thing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's our ride for the whole race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. So there's always two people back there? Sit there right over on the side of the wall there, and anytime they have a wreck, they'll call us out to go. And you just get out there and jump out you on just that. Just dive off there and grab an extinguisher. Oh, so basically your legs go around the fire extinguishers. Right. So sadly, we didn't pick a great day weather-wise. It was raining for the past two days, and it even rained this morning. That's where these come in. These are track dryers. So basically, it's like a big vacuum cleaner that they go around the track, and there's one, two, four, six. Yeah, it'd be great. Open up the side. So how does this thing work? It doesn't suck anything. It just pushes air. Oh, so it, pushes it, it water blows air. It pushes, blows it out. Pushes the water out. Oh, my God. Look at that thing. It's like a full-on race engine in there. So it creates hot air? It doesn't. It doesn't put much hot air down, but it is mostly air to push the water off, and the jet dryers come and put the heat in it and dries it up real quick. That's awesome. And how many of these things do you have? They're going to have like 20 eventually, and they're still making them. Are these, so this is totally new? Yeah. For this season? Yeah. They just, this is the first time, this first race they brought them out in. And do they go from track to track to track? Yes. This is awesome. A V8 powered vacuum cleaner. Any Law & Order fans out there? You know when something happens and they have to call an ambulance and they have to say, someone get a bus out here! In NASCAR, that's the bus. So this is the team transporter, or if you're like me and you're from the south, you call it the hauler. The hauler, got it. Hauler. And uh, the hauler transporter it has got two purposes. Um, it brings all the equipment, the race cars, the supplies, the uniforms to the racetrack. And then when you get to the racetrack, as you can see here, this is set up like a race shop away from the shop. So two cars fit up top. This fortunately is the backup car that they didn't have to use. You only use the backup if you have a problem in qualifying or practice. Yeah. But this car is going to make it safely back to the race shop. The one out on the track is going to go behind here. They're going to load it up top. Close it up, fill this with equipment, and head back to Welcome, North Carolina after the race. So in getting to know NASCAR, I've noticed a couple of things that every team has. Pit crew, tires, and obviously fuel. But there's a couple of things that you don't see that's more behind the scenes. Number one, every team, whether it's their mission control or these haulers that Sam has introduced us to, has a weather radar system. And this is pretty prominent throughout every aspect of racing. And then, one other thing I noticed, Inside each hauler, the most important thing for any team, the food menu throughout race weekend. So, back to Bergushi. Colt had finally finished his trip down memory lane of southern fried anything and handed the baton back to me, which needed to be chopped up and put in a pretty presentation package. But my supervisor reminded me that I forgot something once again. But this something was the secret ingredient. Bacon slow. This press homemade bacon Man, you slow. Guys, bacon really? Yes, bacon slow stop. So this is literally pork on top of pork. Yes. So my apologies to any of you who were hoping for a kosher or vegan version of this dish, but damn it, I was hungry. So I needed to finish this thing up for a presentation to the High Commissioner of Cowfish, Alan, who was going to make the determination of whether Colt and I could eat our finished product. So I did my thing in the back. I fried it, I grilled it, I mean, 
I'll let Moto Man roll it and cut it Are up. Are you so I don't ready know what... for perfection? Is that right? This Look is? at this. This is what Rafali did. Okay. Right, now that looks very that's nice. A good See now that's if you're not artistic, like me. So you did your own version. Look at this. The special Moto Man edition of Bergucci. That looks like messy man. No, this is beautiful. That, that, that's art. This is not staying in between the lines. No, you definitely like the color outside. You want to taste that? This one, I want I want your professional, professional opinion. opinion. Not bad. Not bad that's, at all. We busted our ass back I did my did, part great. I don't know what you did. doesn't work out? We both got so a gig right here. You both got a job. We're working at Cowfish. If nothing okay, goes we right. got it. So you and I have been so focused on the behind the scenes of NASCAR, we haven't focused on today's race. Uh, this was the STP 500, which occurs at the end of every March at Martinsville Speedway in Martinsville, Virginia. Now this circuit is special for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's one of the oldest circuits on the NASCAR Cup Series. And number two, called the Paperclip, uh, with an oval that is points five to six miles. It is the shortest track on the NASCAR Cup Series. Uh, but that's not the only reason why it's special. Uh, what are these guys duking it out for? Fame? Fortune? A trophy? Actually, it's none of the above. These guys are racing for a grandfather clock. So with that, who went home with a clock today? Well, the answer to that question is kind of the reason why NASCAR is unique. From an outsider's point of view, it looks like there's a bunch of guys racing effectively three cars, a Chevy, a Ford, and a Toyota. But in today's case, there were two guys duking it out until the end, Jimmy Johnson and Kurt Busch, both of whom race a Chevrolet SS. But this is where they diverge. Kurt Busch, who races for Stuart Haas Racing, got into a wreck early on in the race. But then he had to fight his way through the pack to get back up to Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, who races for Hendrick Motorsports, he led 296 of the 500 laps. But it wasn't until the last 11 laps that Busch took the lead from Johnson to win the race. Far more interesting, we already said that they're both driving Chevrolets. But here are two separate teams. Both are driving a car with the same chassis and the same engine. So with that, answer me this. What's NASCAR all about? The car, the team, the driver, or perhaps all of the above. While you stew on that, Mr. Ford and I have some unfinished business. Don't fall for greed A jealous man is weak So think before you speak If you love him, let him know If you hate, let it go Fans can be from us Sometimes you need slow God, it's all good The devil is so real So listen up, y'all Cause this is how I feel I won't back up I don't back down I've been raised up To stand my ground Take my job But not my guns Tax my check Till I ain't got none Except for I got to tell you, I did not expect that. I'm faster than I look, buddy. You, you, actually, I didn't expect this either. Hello. Hello to Ashley, Moto Man. Very nice to meet Moto you, Man, Ashley. Nice to meet you. Did you see him going sideways all the way through the turn? I did. He was going pretty fast. I, I don't know about fast, but he was definitely looking oh, pretty he good was out fast. there. Fast. What do you mean? Young? That's what I do. That's what. Fast. Maybe on stage. I move fast. This is too. what I do. Four wheels. This is what I do. It, it's also what I do. All right, look, guys. Enough. What? Do you want the official results? This is your scorekeeper? Absolutely. Like you was that. timing this. You wanted to know the truth, didn't you? Okay, the okay. The truth sets you free. Okay, fine, fine. We, we need scorekeepers okay, like okay, this okay. in Los Angeles. This guy? Yeah. 17 seconds flat. Okay, I could believe that. The nice job. Thank you. What do you Congratulations. Think? Thank you very much. Probably 16.5. Try again. 16. Afraid not. One more time. 15. Nope. 18.5. I'm sorry, but... He's got, here, he beat you. There's got to be like a race organizer I can I speak know. to here. I think we need, Look, to, we need to check the equipment because uh, something wasn't listen, right. No, my I equipment is good. And as a general rule, when a girl gives you her time and you went longer, that's good. In this case, not good. You can't beat this old boy down here in the south. 
Yeah, baby. Now let's see what the Chevy SS will do. Woo! Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Man, this thing's got some power. I know what I'm talking about. Grew up in them rural rounds. Count down them days till I got brave enough to bust out. City lights at my sides. I was gonna do it upright. Now I'm sitting here with this guitar tonight. Alright, kicking it in the big town. Wishing I'd have slowed it down. And I'd give anything if I was driving around with them big dreams in my pocket. Yeah, this is for the ones who don't know. I started out this film with a profound lesson, which reminds me of a life lesson I learned from my mentor years ago, and that is, plan your work and work your plan. That's effectively what NASCAR is. It's a large governing body that kind of sets the parameters for the car, even down to the details of everyone gets gas from the same place, everyone gets the tires from the same place. But that's the point where the individual teams kind of take over. Like, for example, here's a guy that's prepping tires. Or here's a guy that's shaving fractions of a second off the overall pit time by gluing the lug nuts to the wheels. But hey, this is life. Shit happens. There's even a guy, tools, and in this case, sort of parts for when life doesn't go according to plan. So about this point, how many of you still feel that NASCAR is all about ovals and left turns? Now come on. Did you really think I was going to let Colt get away with treating my girl like that? We may be in the South, and you can certainly take the boy out of New York, but you can't take the New York out of the boy. What else can I say? Y'all's in my blood. It's either in your blood.